Hey guys, Alicia Stanton here with Goal Getter Sport, and today I'm going to talk about the quality at bat. Last video we talked about the batting average and how it can have a negative effect on hitters, and if you didn't watch that, I really encourage you to go back and watch it. The link is below, and it really kind of lays the foundation for what we're going to talk about today. So to give you a forewarning, the quality at bat doesn't have an exact definition. It's kind of one of those things that whether you're a coach, you can set the definition for your team, or if you are an individual, you're a player, you can kind of set this for yourself. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna give you some rules and some guidelines to kind of create your own definition of a quality at bat. Um, so I'm gonna give you seven different things that you can take, you can pick a few of them, you can pick all of them, and you can kind of craft your definition of a quality at bat. And I just wanna remind you that the key to the quality at bat is that it helps you focus on the process and what you can control and get away from the outcome or a batting average. All right, first one is hard hit ball. So it, the definition is what it sounds. Out of how many official at bats you did, how many times did you hit the ball hard? And it kind of looks like the batting average, you could have a hard hit ball percentage of 400 or 500 or 350. Um, and again, it just helps you look at that and say, okay, this is how often when I get up to the plate, I'm hitting the ball hard. Uh, next one is an eight pitch at bat. So this one really kind of shows, are you working the pitcher? Are you battling? Are you seeing pitches? Or are you getting out on the first swing? Um, next one is, did you walk or get hit by a pitch? So again, even if it's not a hit, this is an important thing. It's a productive at bat. Now, the next four are kind of situational with runners on base. The first one is, did you move a runner over, whether it's a ground ball? Um, did you move the runner from second to third or first to second? That's important. Second one is a uh, sack fly. Did you hit the ball deep enough so that runner was able to tag up and get to the next base? And then there's your sack bunt, which again, are you sacrificing yourself to get that runner 60 feet over? And then the last one is the RBI. Are you, even if you're giving up an out, are you getting that runner in to score? So these are seven different things that you can look at as part of your quality at bat. And the beauty of it is you can kind of pick what's important to you and you can set those as your parameters to measure. Uh, for example, at Kennesaw, we only measure the hard hit ball. So at the end of each tournament, at the end of each weekend, the coach will send out you know, each hitter's percentage. Maybe someone had a hard hit ball percentage of 400, 450, uh, 375. You kind of see that. And then other teams have different definitions or more um, details that they look at. Maybe it's the eight pitch at bat and hard hit ball, or it's walks and RBIs. You can kind of create as much or as little with that quality at bat as possible. But again, the key to it is that you are focusing on the process and what you can control rather than the outcome or a batting average. So hopefully this makes sense and I really encourage you to give it a shot in your hitting this summer. And um, I actually left a link below that gives you kind of uh, just a foundation of if you're not sure what to do for creating your own quality at bat, this will kind of give you a guide to start. And again, this is Alicia Stant from Bull Getter Sports. Thanks for listening.